Okay. And then where, okay. Where were you, you have a manager for stand up, right? That uh, manager stuff? and agent and stuff. Yeah. Okay. But I booked, so, keep in mind, I booked myself for everything up until about four months ago. Like that's wow. all, all pretty new. Okay. That's great. Okay. So where, where were you when they saw you? Like, did you get like referred or were you just did some stuff and they. So you have to understand that they're, they're just kind of around and by working a lot, people just hear about you. So like I was pretty close to getting an HBO special about two years ago. It didn't end up happening, but I had a bunch of people that liked me there. And it was interesting having a meeting with them after the fact where they're like, Hey, it didn't work out, but you know, please keep us in the loop. And I was like, Oh, where did you see me? And it's like, over the course of six years, they saw me at gigs that I would be embarrassed that they saw me at. And they saw me at stuff where I was like, Oh, that was one of my best shows. But yeah. they, they just kind of saw me whether they were seeing somebody else, or they, they knew this was the hot show to go see people or whatever the reason they're out and about and around. And I, that doesn't say to like, I think LA teaches you that industry is always around. You always have to be perfect. And I've always lived in my life as I got into this to create new stuff and be the best version of myself as a performer. And if this is a free show, I'm going to take a giant comedy dump because that's what it takes for me to get yeah. better. And then if it's a paid gig or if it's an audition, clearly I'm going to put my best stuff forward. So they saw me in every which way and they kept seeing me do new stuff and grow as a comic. And that's what kind of attracted them to what I did, not the fact that I was perfect every time. And I think that's that can really stunt comics and make them not grow um, both creatively or not right. It, it scares them into thinking that they can't keep creating. And that's what I think is how I flourished is I'm constantly writing and experimenting and, and taking risks. And I think that's the best part about comedy. So um, my manager uh, was, was actually my agent and then she ended up becoming my manager. She switched jobs, but she, uh, I, I don't know if you know who Hari Kondabolu is, but he's mm -hmm. uh, a good friend of mine, much bigger comic. He has a Netflix special. Yes. I was, op while I was headlining my own gigs, I would open up for him because he has such a bigger fan base. And that goes yeah. back to that uh, divide. So um, I would open up for him at certain gigs. I would do headline my own stuff, but we were close. And um, whenever he thought somebody, we might work together, he'd recommend me. So he probably recommended me to like five to yeah. eight agents. Got close with a couple of them, but it was this woman, Louise, who's now my manager that ended up picking me up. She became my manager. And then now I'm with uh, Gersh and I have like a lit agent, a performance booking agent and a, uh, an acting agent. And that's all pretty recent. I had um, representation for a while in the UK because I've um, made Europe a big part of my touring career. So I was with uh, another agency for about four years out there. But um, I've always, even when I've had agents, even now with my agents, it's me booking about, I would say right now I'm booking about 50%. Before them, I was booking 90, yeah, like all, 90 yeah. to 100%.